Okay, so it's already one, uh, sorry, it's already 3.01, so we are going to start our class right now. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, and we are, we are so pleased in order to have joining us with us today. So uh, first of all, let, let's uh, Dr. Victoria Jackson introduce about herself first. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, my name is Dr. Victoria Jackson. Victoria is fine. You can call me Victoria. And I am a programme leader at Liverpool John Moores University, which is based in Liverpool, which is in the northwest of the UK. And it is nine o'clock in the morning here. I believe it's, it's three o'clock uh, where you are. So good, good day to you. Good afternoon to everyone. And today I'm going to give a, a very brief overview and some discussions about globalization, what globalization and the globalized economy means, and also hearing the discussions about careers and destinations futures etc talk about how that might be applicable for yourselves as well as as we're all wanting to um you know develop ourselves move forward and as the world becomes one integrated global society so welcome along today i'm, I'm very pleased to be here and it's lovely to see so many students have, have come along today to listen to the talk so thank you okay À, xin chào tất cả mọi người thì vừa rồi là cô Victoria Jackson cô vừa giới thiệu về bản thân của cô thì cô là tiến sĩ và hiện tại thì cô đang là chủ nhiệm của chương trình thạc sĩ quản lý tại trường Liverpool John Moores ở, ở trong cái buổi ngày hôm nay thì cô sẽ chia sẻ cho chúng ta về chủ đề là toàn cầu hóa ở trong cái vấn đề kinh tế là như thế nào và cô cũng muốn lắng nghe cho các lắng nghe từ các em học sinh xem là cái định hướng nghề nghiệp của các em trong tương lai là như thế nào và các em suy nghĩ như thế nào về kinh tế nè, rồi về toàn cầu hóa nữa. Rồi, và cô rất là vui khi mà được gặp các bạn học sinh có mặt đầy đủ ở đây ngày hôm nay. Rồi, thì đó thật ra là do là mọi người biết rồi đó, cô nói khá là nhanh mà thông tin thì lại khá là nhiều nên là chắc là Nhung chỉ chuyển tải được tầm khoảng là 80% hoặc là 70% gì đó thông tin thôi. Nên là mọi người cố gắng là uh, lắng nghe cái buổi ngày hôm nay một cách tốt nhất nha. Okay, Roy. Um, so now we are going to introduce Miss Lam uh, Lam Lam so from NC UK IFY. She's also the one from the education group who join with us in order to cooperate this event. Uh, first of all, so I would like to say thank to Miss Victoria for your time today. Uh, và chào tất cả các bạn thì chị là Lam đại diện của chương trình NC UK IFY tại Việt Nam thì chị cũng rất là cảm ơn các anh chị của bên VN Talent đã tham dự uh, đã host buổi demo class ngày hôm nay thì các bạn ơi trong xuyên suốt quá trình mà các bạn tham dự buổi demo class mình có bất kỳ câu hỏi gì thì các bạn có thể bỏ vô chat box hoặc là các bạn có thể giơ tay lên thì chị nghĩ là cô Victoria rất là vui nếu mà mình có một cái cuộc đối thoại hai chiều ha thì trong suốt quá trình học thì các bạn cứ feel free Um, speak up, yeah. Rồi, cảm ơn các bạn rất là nhiều. Okay, so uh, right now we can anyone hear me? Yes. Okay. So right now we are going to introduce about like the uh, VN talent first, and then or. Oh, Miss Lam, are you going to introduce about NC UK first? Do you have any like presentation that you are going to share? Mm, I just have some quick, uh, some brief information for the student. So the NC UK IFY in Vietnam is a foundation program. So after you finish this foundation program, you will have the granted access to a lot of university around the world. And I think like at this moment, I think like the student they are more interested in the lessons of Miss Victoria. So I can share information about NCUK IFY afterward. So I want to save time for Miss Victoria as much as I can. Okay, so um, for now, I am going to represent about VN Talents. Sorry, Miss Victoria, because like because the the limit of time I'm going to share in Vietnamese. And then we are going to have your class. Okay. À, xin chào tất cả mọi người thì chị là Đỗ Khoa Nguyên Nhung là uh, nhân viên của công ty VN Talent thì bây giờ chị sẽ bắt đầu giới thiệu về uh, công ty VN Talent thì VN Talent là đơn vị uh, tổ chức 
phối hợp cùng với lại NCUKFY và trường Liverpool Charles Moore giới thiệu về cái buổi lớp học ngày hôm nay. Vậy thì VN Talent là ai? Chúng ta hãy cùng nhau tìm hiểu và sơ lược về công ty này trước để mà các bạn có thể an tâm hơn nha. Rồi ok, mọi người đợi Nhung một xíu, Nhung sẽ share cái phần thông tin này với mọi người. Wow, where is it? Rồi, thì đầu tiên là mọi người có thể thấy trên màn hình đó chính là dòng chữ tên của công ty VN Talent. VN Talent là viết tắt của Việt Nam Tài Năng, à, VN trong chữ Việt Nam và Talent trong chữ Tài Năng. Rồi, vậy thì VN Talent là ai? VN Talent tụi mình là một công ty tư vấn du học và hướng nghiệp. Thì nếu như nói về du học thì mọi người sẽ thấy được hai hình thức du học chính hiện nay mà VN Talent đang cung cấp đó chính là du học tự túc và du học học bổng. Và ngoài ra thì chúng ta VN Talent còn hỗ trợ cho các bạn học sinh hướng nghiệp nữa đó chính là tư vấn cho các bạn biết về ngành nghề này học những cái gì và định hướng trong tương lai các bạn sẽ cần làm những cái gì như thế nào thì VN Talent sẽ là đơn vị cung cấp cái này. Ngoài ra thì trước thời điểm dịch Covid xảy ra thì VN Talent còn là đơn vị tổ chức các cái chuyến thực tập thực tế tại các nước ví dụ như là Malaysia, Trung Quốc và Campuchia cho một số trường đại học và trong năm 2018 và 2019 à, trước Trước khi mà Covid xảy ra thì VN Talent đã tổ chức thành công cho hai trường đại học ở thành phố Hồ Chí Minh. Đó chính là trường đại học Sài Gòn và trường đại học khoa học xã hội nhân văn. Rồi. Ok. Next please. Oh. Nó đứng rồi. <cười> Sorry mọi người nó bị đứng rồi mọi người ơi. Rồi. Vậy thì người sáng lập VN Talent là ai? Tại sao chị phải giới thiệu ngày hôm nay? Bởi vì là người sáng lập của VN Talent là người đưa ra những cái quan điểm khi mà làm việc cũng như là để cho các nhân viên trong công ty có thể hiểu được là mình phải có phong cách làm việc như thế nào và chị cũng đang tham gia lớp học ngày hôm nay của chúng ta. Đó chính là chị có tên là Ella. Thì tên tiếng Việt của chị đó chính là Nguyễn Thị Phương Uyên. À, chị tốt nghiệp ngành quan hệ quốc tế của trường Đại học Khoa học Xã hội Nhân văn nên là bạn nào mà đang quan tâm về ngành này thì có thể liên hệ chị sau đó. Rồi, ngoài ra thì chị còn học chương trình là thạc sĩ quản trị kinh doanh ở bên Đan Mạch, có nghĩa là ở bên Bắc Âu và với kinh nghiệm hơn 10 năm của mình làm trong lĩnh vực tư vấn du học cũng như là hướng nghiệp thì khi mà các bạn có bất kỳ câu hỏi nào về du học cũng như là quan tâm về cái định hướng ngành nghề của mình thì có thể liên hệ với chị Uyên. Rồi, thì đây, cái này thì mình sẽ đi qua thật là nhanh chóng thôi. Thì đây đó chính là hai cái loại giấy phép để công ty VN Talent có thể thực hiện được các cái chương trình tư vấn du học và đảm bảo được cái quyền lợi của các bạn học sinh khi mà các bạn qua bên công ty của mình. Đó chính là giấy phép đăng ký kinh doanh và giấy phép nghiệp vụ tư vấn du học. Đó, thì đây là hai cái mẫu giấy tờ. Rồi, đây là một số hình ảnh mà VN Talent đã phối hợp với lại các trường để thực hiện các chuyến đi thực tập thực tế. Trên màn hình thì mọi người có thể thấy là đây là chuyến đi thực tế Malaysia của công ty VN Talent phối hợp với lại trường Đại học Sài Gòn, khoa ngôn ngữ Anh. Và tiếp theo đó thì chúng ta có thể thấy được là Đại học Sài Gòn khoa quan hệ quốc tế. nè Và đây là chuyến đi Campuchia của trường Đại học Khoa học Xã hội Nhân văn Khoa quan hệ quốc tế và chắc chắn là ở trong đây thì có rất là nhiều bạn cũng nghe về Trung Quốc rồi thì VN Talent cũng từng tổ chức cho các bạn Khoa quan hệ quốc tế trường Đại học Khoa học Xã hội Nhân văn đi thăm trường Đại học Bách Khoa Thiên Tân à, thì đây là một số hình ảnh thực tế của cái chuyến đi thực tập lần đó rồi một cách thật là nhanh chóng thì uh, sau này khi mà các bạn trong thời gian sắp tới VN Talent chắc chắn sẽ còn tổ chức rất nhiều các hoạt động demo class hoàn toàn miễn phí như thế này cho các bạn. Vậy thì các bạn chắc chắn sẽ đang quan tâm là VN Talent là ai và vì sao mình nên tin tưởng VN Talent. Trước nhất thì mọi người có thể an tâm là VN Talent là một đơn vị uh, có đầy đủ tư cách pháp nhân và pháp lý. Khi mà mọi người đi qua bên công ty VN Talent hoặc làm việc với VN Talent thì mọi người có thể an tâm là các quyền lợi của mình được đảm bảo. Ngoài ra thì tất cả các nhân viên tư vấn tại công ty VN Talent đều phải có các bằng cấp đảm bảo là hỗ trợ cho các bạn học sinh được tốt nhất. Ví dụ như là bằng cấp là IELTS nếu như làm thị trường nói tiếng Anh và HSK nếu như làm thị trường nói tiếng Trung. Và hiển nhiên là cũng phải có bằng tiếng Pháp nếu như làm ở thị trường nói tiếng Pháp. Rồi. Ngoài ra thì VN Talent rất là minh bạch và trung thực trong việc tư vấn cho tất cả các bạn học sinh. Ví dụ sau
À, sorry mọi người không biết ai mute mình. <cười> <cười> ok à, và sau này thì khi nào mà các bạn không các bạn có quan tâm đến việc đi du học thì các bạn có thể an tâm liên hệ với VN Talent để được tư vấn và VN Talent sẽ tư vấn uh, minh bạch ở trong vấn đề chi phí và trung thực trong việc tư vấn cho mình và ngoài ra thì uh, các bạn có thể thấy được những dạng lớp như thế này là những cái chương trình mà VN Talent hỗ trợ cho học sinh và sau này VN Talent luôn cam kết sẽ hỗ trợ học sinh lâu dài ngay cả khi các bạn đã đi qua du học rồi thì VN Talent vẫn sẽ hỗ trợ các bạn và cuối cùng là VN Talent là đơn vị là đối tác chính thức của rất là nhiều trường nên là hiển nhiên là các bạn sẽ được tham gia các buổi demo class như thế này với các trường hoàn toàn miễn phí nè và ngoài ra thì các bạn còn sẽ được uh, có cơ hội giao lưu với các trường tìm hiểu thêm nhiều trường hơn rồi thì uh, vừa rồi là sơ lược về VN Talent và một cách thật là ngắn gọn ok bây giờ thì chúng ta sẽ uh, Nhìn qua một số kênh truyền thông của VN Talent đang có Thì mọi người nếu như quan tâm về VN Talent Thì có thể uh, tìm thêm thông tin ở trên Facebook ha Hoặc là trên Youtube à Để xem những cái video Hoặc là trên thông tin ở trên website Luôn được cập nhật liên tục Và đây là một số thông tin liên hệ Trong trường hợp các bạn cần liên hệ Thì đừng ngần ngại liên hệ với VN Talent Rồi, uh, phần quan trọng nhất của ngày hôm nay Đó chính là phần học vui trúng lớn À, nãy giờ thì giới thiệu VN Talent vậy thôi chứ rất là mong tới phần này Vì sao phần này lại rất là vui mọi người Hôm nay lớp học của mình sẽ có phần thưởng là hai voucher trị giá 100.000 đồng Cho hai bạn học sinh tương tác với lớp học tích cực nhất, năng động nhất Sau cuối buổi học ngày hôm nay các bạn sẽ có trò chơi Kahoot Và nếu như mà các bạn thắng giải nhất và giải nhì Thì các bạn sẽ được cái phần quà voucher này Ngoài ra thì chúng ta còn có một máy tính bảng trị giá là 3 triệu đồng. Đây là máy tính bảng có hệ điều hành Android nha mọi người. Vậy thì làm thế nào mà để được cái voucher thì khi nãy Nhung đã có sơ lược rồi. Mọi người có thể chụp cái màn hình ở phần này lại để mà một hồi phấn đấu đạt điểm nha. Rồi, tiếp theo đó là làm thế nào để được máy tính bảng. Rồi, sau khi mọi người kết thúc lớp học ngày hôm nay, mọi người sẽ viết một bài cảm nhận về lớp học demo class này và tối thiểu là 200 từ. Sau khi các bạn viết xong, gửi đến email partners.vntalent.edu.vn với tiêu đề như là ở trên màn hình là họ và tên phản hồi về demo class của VN Talent kèm theo hình ảnh mà bạn muốn minh họa cho bài viết của bạn. Đó, thì Nhung có ví dụ ở bên dưới là Nguyễn Văn A phản hồi về Demo Class của VN Talent. Rồi, thì các bạn gửi đến mail của Partners hạn chót là trước 20 giờ ngày 24 tây tháng 6 à, và đến ngày đến ngày 25 tây tháng 6 vào lúc 12 giờ trưa thì VN Talent sẽ đăng cái bài đăng mà các bạn gửi đến VN Talent lên fanpage của tụi mình. Ok. Mình bằng tiếng Việt hay tiếng Anh ạ? À, mình viết bằng tiếng Việt thôi nha tiếng việt được rồi cho nó đại chúng <cười> rồi sau khi mà các bạn viết xong thì các bạn gửi đến email và 12 giờ ngày 25 tới tháng 6 vn talent sẽ đăng lên fanpage của tụi mình các bạn hãy kêu gọi bạn bè like share cái bài post đó cứ mỗi like các bạn sẽ được một điểm và cứ mỗi share các bạn sẽ được ba điểm à phải share ở chế độ công khai nha và hạn chót của các bình chọn vậy sẽ rơi vào là ngày 28 tháng 6 lúc 8 giờ sau thời gian trên tụi mình sẽ tổng kết lại bài post nào có nhiều lượt like và lượt share nhất sẽ được thắng giải nhất và sẽ được nhận máy tính bản trị giá 3 triệu đồng này. Và tụi mình sẽ công bố kết quả chính thức vào lúc 8 giờ sáng ngày 29 giờ tháng 6 và sẽ trao giải cho các bạn luôn vào bằng đường bưu điện hoặc là bằng một cái phương tiện nào đó mà đảm bảo là máy tính bản sẽ không bị hư. Rồi, và phần máy tính bản này chúng ta vẫn không quên nhấn mạnh về nhà tài trợ đó chính là... Uh, Phần máy tính bản này được tài trợ bởi uh, tổ chức giáo dục NCUKIFY và trường đại học Johns Liverpool John Moores của chúng ta. Rồi, bây giờ thì uh, kết thúc buổi giới thiệu rất là ngắn gọn và một số cái phần quà rất hấp dẫn thì chúng ta hãy cùng đi vào lớp học của cô Victoria Jackson nha. Ok, hi Miss Victoria, I have just completed my very long presentation, so could you please start your presentation right now? Well, thank you very much for the introduction. I will just share my screen if that's okay. Okay, so can everyone see the slides? Just um, if just someone just gives a shout when they can see them, then I know everyone's able to access those slides. Mọi người ơi, mình đã thấy cái slide ở trên màn hình của cô chưa? 
You're wrong. Yeah. Okay. I think that they all they all see now. Brilliant. Thank you. So today's session is to give students an insight into a little bit what teaching is like in the UK. We've all had the coronavirus pandemic, so a lot of our teaching has shifted online. So there has been some changes recently, but I'm trying to give you a, a bit of an example of what we would have as a lecture. Um, the seminar groups would be a lot more discursive, so that means we'd have a lot more discussion if this was a seminar group. But I appreciate that students don't know me yet, I don't know students yet, so doing a seminar type approach where we're asking students to contribute and discuss might be a bit scary at first. So today's session is more typical of a, of a lecture, of a UK lecture that would take place online. There'll be some discussion where I welcome students to talk, but there's no there's no pressure to talk if you don't want to. And then usually to have some engagement or do a kind of quiz. So later on, at the end of these slides, I have got a Kahoot quiz for us to do. And it's just based on what is covered in these slides today. So it's not a, I'm not being cruel with it with a test. This is just whatever we've talked about. This, this afternoon um, is what will crop up in that um, Kahoot quiz later. Um, and please, if anyone needs any uh, translation, please just, just let me know and I'll, I'll pause uh, whilst that takes place. So to, to proceed on to this session, as you all know, the title is Globalisation of the World Economy. What does that mean? What, what does globalisation of the world economy mean? And it's, it's not as easy as to define as you might think. So today's session, I'm just going to try and move on my slides, there we go, is an overview of globalisation, what it is, um, a little bit about what it isn't. Some examples that have been enabled by globalisation, so the Vietnam-UK trade agreement couldn't happen without globalisation. Uh, the Unilever case study example could not have happened without globalisation, so to give you some examples of globalisation in practice. And that is very common for teaching in business schools across the world, so not just the UK. Um, it is what was traditionally an Americanized model, so that um, American business schools started teaching by case studies. And by case study, we just mean an in-depth discussion about one organization or about an industry. And a lot of how we learn about the material is looking how it works in practice. When all of you students here are going out into the world of work, you want the theory, of course you want the theory, the textbooks, what, what the, the, the research says, but you also want to know the practical examples, how it has worked in industry, how other businesses have undertaken such activities, because you use that as, as examples for your own business and examples as well. So a lot of what you'll have probably throughout sessions at the, in, in this event is that the business education is usually taught through case study. And it's a good way to really get the, the level of detail that's needed to understand. Uh, Globalisation is a concept. Uh, it is an academic concept. And there are good points and there are bad points. So we do have to look at some of the negative viewpoints of globalization, what is called the anti-globalization viewpoint or a critique of globalization. And that's come to light recently, more so because of the impact of coronavirus, of COVID-19, that has really highlighted to the world how much we rely upon each other. And sometimes some people think that isn't a good thing. And then finally, there's a Kahoot quiz, which hopefully you will find fun. So at, at a risk of not getting any response here, please do, if you feel brave, type into the chat box. When we say the word globalisation, what does that mean to you? What do you think of when you hear the word globalisation? So something has popped up. Uh, hopefully that's a translation. Um, so please do, if you feel brave, just one word, two words. I'm not asking for a definition um, because we'll talk about definitions in a moment. But what do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing? Are you familiar with it? Have you heard of it before? Is this a completely new area? 
So any, any word or two that you want to just say, please do type into the chat box. I do like sessions where students can be involved in the learning and we can learn from each other. Ok mọi người ơi thì bây giờ cô đang có một câu hỏi cho chúng ta là theo mọi người nghĩ thì mọi người thấy là khi mà mọi người nghe đến um, uh, toàn cầu hóa thì mọi người nghĩ gì đầu tiên? Mọi người nghĩ toàn cầu hóa là gì? Cái điểm tốt và cái điểm yếu của cái việc toàn cầu hóa này là gì? Mọi người có thể comment uh, vào cái phần chat, vào cái phần inbox một chút xíu thôi cũng được. Ví dụ như vừa nghe về vấn đề toàn cầu hóa thì mọi người sẽ nghĩ là toàn cầu hóa là gì? À, không cần phải viết định nghĩa đâu nha mọi người chỉ cần cái suy nghĩ đầu tiên của mình thôi là được. I, I won't be I won't be as pressuring today, but as an example, usually oh thank you Victoria Jackson. That's a good answer. Uh, usually <cười> in in a lecture session with my students, I I would say that I am expecting at least five students to respond and then I will move on. So we have the same in, in the UK. Many students are nervous, a bit scared to write what they think. But actually that's a really good way to start getting involved in the learning and become hands-on. So usually we will, we will try and encourage students as much as possible just to type something in, respond. Um, usually if you're sat there thinking, Oh, I don't quite know what the answer to that question is. Other students and learners will be thinking the same thing. So it's a safe place to start to add in your thoughts and your viewpoints. And research shows that the earlier you get engaged in a session, the more engaged you'll be throughout that session as well. So you hopefully will get more from it the more you are involved. And I can see the chat box yeah. is going. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you. That's really great. Mọi người ơi, thật sự ra là trong lớp học này thì hầu như chúng ta đều chưa có cái kiến thức gì về toàn cầu hóa hoặc là về kinh tế hết. Bản thân của chị cũng không có rành về kiến thức của kinh tế. Nhưng mà mọi người cứ thoải mái sharing là mọi người nghĩ cái gì, nghĩ như thế nào về cái này để mà cô có thể hiểu được là mình đang hiểu tới đâu rồi. Từ đó cô chia sẻ những cái vấn đề mà nó tốt hơn và nó liên quan với cái phần mà mình đã hiểu rồi nha mọi người. Ok. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just quickly go through those. So Victoria Jackson, well done. Integration of the world countries, of course. So what we're talking today is what we're going to call a global village. Uh, I think globalization is spread of product information. Absolutely right. There are two types of globalization. Globalization of markets, globalization of production. Globalization of markets is where you are sending your products out all around the world. So your market is globalized. You don't just sell to Vietnam, you sell to Malaysia, you sell to India, you sell to the UK, you sell to Europe. So that's globalization of, of markets, globe, the spread of products. Information is a very good point as well. That's another point of globalization is the sharing of knowledge, making sure that that knowledge is shared and that's been helped vastly by the internet which we're working through wonderfully today, uh, and just connection through technology and telecommunication. So thank you. Uh, another one, free and easy connection to all people around the world. Yes, that links into connecting with your markets, but also connecting to your suppliers. There are many instances. So in the UK, we have a big car manufacturing industry. For now, let's see how Brexit goes. But we have a large manufacturing industry. And we, as in the UK, we purchase our raw materials from all over the world, all the different car components. So it's connection to our supply chains around the world, as well as to that spread of information, connection with other people around the world. Again, thankful to the technology that allows it. So yeah, international trade, fantastic. So globalization has allowed much more um, breaking down of borders, allowing countries to trade more freely. And we're going to talk about an example uh, today as well. So thank you. I, 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 I might struggle, I apologize. Khan Huen Doti is uh, written in Vietnamese. So I don't know um, what that comment is if someone wants to translate. Can you still hear me okay? Hello? Yes. Is, is, can, 
Ah, okay, sorry. I wasn't sure if you could still hear me or not. Um, okay, the development of the world. Brilliant. It is. It's moving the world forward. There's lots of positives to developing through globalisation and advancing the world global economic growth. I love the word sustain the world. Yes, we also want to grow responsibly. And um, this is part of the criticisms of globalization is that actually does globalization promote sustainable development, especially for the lower and middle income countries, those um, emerging economies? Do, is globalization fair for all world economies equally? Does it help develop sustainability? Expansion of the field of economics, industry, uh, corporations, transnational corporations we'll talk about today absolutely it does help those organizations and industries to expand across the world through international trade the downside is what was mentioned before about sustaining the world is some corporations lose out the smaller organizations tend to do less well because of globalization than the big global organizations so there is an equity issue about Bigger organisations benefit from globalisation, smaller organisations tend to suffer because of globalisation. So, so there are some that are absolutely right that globalisation is expanding companies, industries, um, those economic areas. But within that, there are some challenges for the smaller businesses. Products available in every country, and that is the, the, the capitalist dream. The organisations want to have their products all around the world in every country, and that is globalisation of markets. There is a downside to that in that everyone in every country has the same items, the same products, and where's the different cultures that are allowed to come through and the different tastes and customs and uh, preferences. So there is an element of globalization can sometimes erode or, or, or work away at national sovereignty. And some scholars and some politicians and some countries aren't as keen as that. But in terms of business, the business point of view, yes, products in all countries is what the aim is for maximizing reach um ex yeah, so expand all over the world uh, connecting yeah so there's lots about trade investment labor fantastic first time that's mentioned the free movement of people and that's one of the huge benefits of globalization that people from all over the world can move to other parts of the world for work for study for travel for just just experiences the free movement of people is another element, not just the trade of goods, but also people and the free movement of people and investment as well. It's an issue that the world cares about. Yes, a very good opinion. The world is very, very much invested in globalization. There are world sort of organizations, something called the World Trade Organization. They're very much supportive of globalization. And therefore, that is encouraging countries to break down borders. So rather than become closed borders, what we call protectionist economies, the plan is to open up those borders and easily allow the free movement of trade and goods, the free movement of services, people, labour, specific skills, as well as investment, foreign direct investment, the free movement of capital and money. And that is hopefully the plan for growing the economy, the economy, global growth. But as I mentioned, there is a negative and there can be some, some, some who suffer because of globalisation. Uh, changes in society in the world economy caused by increasing linkages and exchange between countries, organisations, individuals in terms of culture. Fantastic. Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. So thank you very much. Uh, yes, World Trade Organisation. Thank you very much. Yeah, that is. They are a global. They have a global overview. Uh, many organisations, many countries are members of the World Trade Organization and they are promoting that global trade around the world and as you mentioned that international shipping of course it is the international reach so thank you 
that is much more engagement than I thought would be. I really appreciate all your answers. Uh, I'm very knowledgeable. You've obviously already read up on, on globalization and have an awareness already. So I will now move on to talk a bit more about globalization um, that we've touched upon already. The reason why it's difficult that, that to answer there what globalization was or what globalization is, there is no universally agreed definition. So each different source of information you read, different textbooks, different articles, different government um, papers and, and bills will all have a slightly different variation of what globalization means to them. There isn't one individual globalization definition, but it's usually about integration of international markets in terms of commodities, which are goods, things that can be bought and sold, capital, which is about money, investment, and labor markets in terms of people. So in a nutshell, globalization in its most simplified definition, the free movement of people, goods, and money, which is what most of you have already mentioned in our text chat then, that there's already a good understanding of what globalization is. And it's in that building a global, a global village, increasingly interconnected and integrated world. Okay, some factors that have enabled globalization. Globalization is not a new phenomenon. It has been around for centuries. You go back into the history textbooks and there are stories of different armies joining forces, uh, and able to work better together. So it's the idea that cooperation is more effective than competition. In fact, that applies to many business transactions. There's less outcomes for collaboration and cooperation and working together than there is for competition and working against each other. So go back into many, many centuries ago, there's lots of um, examples where different areas of, of, of um, the world have worked together to uh, trade, uh, trade goods, and to benefit from that mutual trade agreement. So what we're talking about now is recent globalization, and recent globalization is basically because of the technology. So there's been an explosion in globalization because access to smartphones, access to the internet, uh, emails, uh, telecommunications, so that improved technology, internet connectivity all around the world has really advanced globalization from where it was previously. But not just improved technology, because that's great to communicate with others, that's great to reach other markets, but actually we need cheaper and more effective transportation. So selling something in the UK to somewhere in Vietnam, there's quite a large way to travel. And at the moment, it's relatively difficult to travel from one country to another because of the coronavirus pandemic. But usually, travel has become much cheaper in the past, in, in, in the recent years. Air travel, so aeroplane travel, uh, cargo ships and, and, and boats is become much cheaper, much faster, much more effective. So we've combined improved technology with cheaper, more efficient supply chain and logistic issues to actually ship our products around the world and reach other markets. So those two elements in tandem have really helped work together to advance globalization. You then bring into the whole point that governments have to have policies that allow globalization to take place. So what we call foreign policies are how each government sort of outline how they will approach international trade with different partners around the world. Some economies are quite closed. They have strict borders, there's strict policies for either traveling or selling and, and transferring of goods into that economy, and they have high tariffs. That is something that America has been doing recently. That they, they was in they were in a cold war with, with China. I'm sure you've read about that in the news. 
there's been there was lots of concern at one point about how that would escalate so there was a trade war and america started to put its tariffs up to prevent chinese products being transferred to america and being sold in america because if you put your tariffs up the company then has to pay those taxes to sell those products in america then became too expensive so it meant that they lost that competitive advantage of cheaper products so the taxation policies of the company of the countries are also important if you've got lower taxations on imports and exports you are going to have more free movement of goods and increases uh, that globalized approach so a closed economy we call a, a protectionist state an open economy they're more open to globalization and finally transnational corporations so we mentioned briefly in the chat about the big corporations are the ones who benefit from globalization and those big ones transnational corporations so tnc's they have companies um sorry subsidiary companies so smaller versions of their companies all around the world and that's where they are transnational in that they operate across different countries there is also multinational mncs they have multiple points around the world as well so you've got organizations who want to move out of their own country into another country to benefit from those markets benefit from those labor supply and sell their products as well so transnational corporations are also driving um globalization with their desire to move into other countries I can see there's been a few things that have popped up in our chat. Um, it is all in Vietnamese. I'm sorry, I, 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 can't, I can't translate. Does anyone want to come in to translate at this point? Um, I have already listed uh, list out some of the information in the chat box so that it will be not uh, interrupt you. Furthermore, the student, they have uh, the, the English so they can understand what you are saying. So this is okay for you to talk <laughs> like this. But that, yeah. That's okay, that's fine. We, we have many students who come to the UK from all over the world. And it is one thing, obviously, learning English, but then having someone who's a native English person speaking at you with my accent, um, I can be a fast speaker. Uh, it is often sometimes quite daunting. So we do try and allow time for, for students to just question things if they're not sure, uh, to be very supportive of, of students who, for English is not their first language, it, it can be difficult. So we do appreciate that. So please do stop me anytime you need me to. Yes, no so worries. Thank you. So those are some factors that have just enabled globalization. It's almost been like a perfect storm. Lots of different aspects have come together to allow globalization to rapidly advance over the past few decades compared to where we've been in the past few uh, centuries. So what does the globalized economy look like? Well, we've talked about the free movement of goods. So you'll see lots of imports and exports of different countries. See so lots of cargo ships and air sort of cargo planes delivering goods around the world in terms of shipping to markets uh, around the globe. So that's a, a globalized market where your goods are being shipped out to different countries. There's also imports coming in to countries of raw materials. So in the UK, uh, we ship in lots of raw materials for, for as I said, the, the car manufacturing industry, and therefore lots of our materials come from all around the world on these cargo ships and cargo flights. So imports and exports, free movement of goods is part of that globalised economy. The free movement of people. This means that there are easier ways to move between different countries. There are Schengen visa areas where you can move more freely within those areas. There is the European Union as part of that, a free movement within that. So there are what are called trade as well as um, labour market areas where people can move more freely between those specific areas. But globalisation, especially around free movement of people, has really been at a current discussion point over the last 18 months, but obviously because of the coronavirus pandemic. So there's lots of discussions about that free movement of people, COVID passports, quarantine. 
But ultimately, businesses still need access to a labour supply. Whatever visa regulations there may be, whatever quarantine uh, regulations they might be, there is still going to be a need for that free movement of people to meet business needs. And that results in a multicultural team in which people work. So we have people all around the world who work in our universities in the UK and vice versa. People in the UK go out to work in many different industries and countries around the world in, in return. So although the UK is going through something called Brexit, where we have removed the UK from the European Union, there is still huge discussions about that free movement of people uh, to allow that to continue moving forward. So it's a, it's a key area for all people around the world to have access to other markets, to live and to work. And it is a huge, big part of a globalised economy. And that is where many people benefit from working in more developed economies. So we, we, at the moment, there is a huge, big growth in uh, India. Is India is one of the, the, the first that, sorry, India is the main economy for what we call human capital flight. So many citizens of India leave India to go and live and work in America or in the UK to work in more um, different working conditions than they might have have in certain areas within India. So India is the biggest economy that actually has so many of its citizens move out of India to work in other economies around the world. It can be a challenge for India because they want to keep that human capital, they want to keep those well-educated and trained citizens within India to benefit the Indian economy because India's got the biggest populations of the world, there is a huge expanse of Indian citizens living and working outside. And that's been allowed by globalisation. It allows other countries to benefit from those education skills from those other countries as well. So the UK, we are a small country. We are tiny in comparison to many other countries around the world. I believe the globe that you see, a, an actual globe um, or a map of the UK in terms of the other economies, it's not to proportion. The UK is much smaller. It's a little dot compared to the other regions around the world. We don't have enough population to sustain all of business needs. We need to have immigration. We need to have people from other parts of the world come and work in the UK because in the UK we have a declining population. So there's always going to be a need in certain countries like the UK for people to come and work um, from other countries around the world. So the free movement of people is a very important element of globalisation. As is the free movement of capital. And this is about investment, investment in foreign countries, particularly in those emerging economies um, to have a role in developing those economies and helping some economies go through what's known as the industrial revolution. So FDI is foreign direct investment, and this is where certain companies from one economy might directly invest quite heavily. It's got to be a, a significant proportion, it's got to be over 20% has to be invested in, in a foreign company. And it's got to be a long term investment for it to be classed as FDI. So there are regulations as to what FDI means. It's not just putting some money into a company. There are um, some particular regulations around that. But FDI is a really good way for sort of transnational corporations and multinational corporations to invest in economies around the world by investing in those countries for long term development. So together, that is what makes a globalised economy. So I'm now going to move on to some examples of what has been able to benefit from having this globalised economy, this global village. So Vietnam, UK trade agreement. So Vietnam and the UK have already had a trade agreement, um, but it's been updated more recently. And this is a bilateral trade agreement. So Bilateral, it is um, bi, mean, means two. So we've got a trade agreement between um, the UK and uh, Vietnam, and that is the agreement just between those two economies. So if you have a, a multilateral agreement, that means that you've got lots of different uh, 
uh, agreements with different economies, but bilateral is just one economy has an agreement with another economy, and in this case, Vietnam and the UK. And the, the Vietnam economy is a huge opportunity for the UK. There has been huge growth in the trade between the UK since 2010. So it's now at 5.8 billion pounds in this last record for 2020. So according to the UK Department of International Trade, this lists here some of the key exports from Vietnam to the UK and from the UK to Vietnam. So the UK, we benefit from Vietnam's clothing, footwear, seafood and, guard, uh, and wooden furniture. So that is what are some of the main exports from Vietnam into the UK. In return, the UK export to Vietnam, pharmaceuticals, machinery, mechanical equipment. So that is our trade agreement. <clears throat> the trade agreement is a free trade agreement. That means that Vietnam and the UK have agreed to not have taxes and tariffs at the borders and to allow those goods to move freely. It also takes away some of the paperwork, so it's, it reduces delays as well, because one thing that businesses don't want is you want to have a cheap price, a competitive price when you arrive in a different country, but you also want it to arrive in a timely manner. There's no good having a really cheap product if it takes 15 weeks to arrive. So there has got to be a reduction of paperwork, reduction of what we call bureaucracy to make it a streamer, faster process, but also reducing those tariffs and taxes means that it's, it takes away the added cost. And the bottom bullet point here that by eliminating tariffs between trade of the UK and Vietnam, it means that the UK exports have saved £6.2 million pounds, and then the exports are £42 million. Pounds. So there's huge savings there on what that tariffs uh, would add to the, the cost of those goods and products. So free trade is a key, it's a key pillar of globalization. It's really about keeping that trade, those costs down so that prices can remain competitive in different economies. And that's what the Vietnamese and the UK governments have agreed to have this free trade agreement, which means that it takes millions of pounds of extra taxes and tariffs away to allow us to trade together more freely. So that's an example of international trade. I'm just going to move on to the next slide, which now talks about um, more about investment and transnational or multinational corporations. So Unilever, uh, Unilever was originally uh, started in the UK. It was started in, in England. They were called the, the Unilever Brothers. It was their family name. Uh, it was Unilever was a family name. And it was set up in the uh, Victorian England to help create a soap to encourage people in England to, to wash. So it was encouraging hygiene, something that took you know, uh, some time to develop. So um, it was about encouraging hygiene, encouraging health through better hygiene. And there was a soap that was de developed by the Unilever brothers at the time. And that's how they started the Unilever company in, in England, in the UK. So it started in the 90, 1890s with their sunlight soap. Fast forward to 1995 and Unilever started its business in Vietnam. And it now has its headquarters, forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, there is a Unilever headquarters in Vietnam. That wouldn't have been allowed without government policy to allow such international corporations to move into those economies. So that's where the government foreign policy has to enable international corporations to move into those economy and to actually develop their companies and their products in that particular host economy. So without globalization, without those foreign policies allow for globalization to take place, this example could not have happened. So, and the same for the previous example, without free trade, the trade between Vietnam and the UK would not have grown over the past 10 years. And without the, the foreign policies being enabling Unilever to move into Vietnam, that wouldn't have happened either. So this is showing the way in which the global growth is benefiting from globalization as a concept. 
And Unilever, I believe, from what I've read, has become the most successful foreign invested investor in Vietnam. So that's allowing that development, that growth, that access to labour labor and, and um, skills, but also developing and providing jobs and helping to develop the Vietnamese economy, as well as benefiting the UK as well. So these are just a couple of examples of how globalisation is working in practice. As I mentioned earlier, however, globalisation is not all good. There, there are some huge concerns with equity, equality, fairness around globalisation. It tends to be the big organisations that dominate. They are able to engage in FDI, in foreign direct investment. They have the capital behind them to do that. And what happens is that as those markets open up, as those multinational and transnational corporations send their products around the world, they are sending the same products. And it becomes what we call McDonaldization. So we have McDonald's uh, all around the world, the, the fast food restaurant chain, and it is very similar menus, slight variations for different tastes or different customs and cultures, but very similar looking restaurants, similar fast food approach, um, and it becomes the same products sold all around the world. And that can sometimes erode um, individual countries, cultures, customs, practices. So there has been some concerns about the, the current dominating economy is America. It's a, the, the world's biggest economy. It will always be the world's biggest economy. I think China is going to soon overtake America. And what happens is that that, that global economy often dominates. So it's those American companies that send out their products and their services around the world. They are the biggest companies that are able to capitalize from globalization. What happens is we all end up with the same American products, American popular cultures, American styles. For some, that's very good and very welcomed. For others, there's a concern that that's watering down local customs and cultures. And there are benefits and negatives. Uh, some of globalization and the policies that have helped have helped advance uh, support for gender inequality. So, of course, I'm all pro gender equality. We want to develop, you know, uh, equality in the workplace, not for, for gender, but for different uh, backgrounds and customs and cultures as well. So because you've got um, different uh, companies moving in, they bring with them their regulations and their processes of how to work. And sometimes that can benefit other economies in different ways, but it can also have a negative. So I want to highlight that. Some will argue that globalization is not all good. It can be detrimental to the smaller organizations. When a large organization moves into that economy, those small individual family owned businesses might suffer. So it can have a negative effect on that. And because of that, sometimes the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. So globalization hasn't solved that problem. The gap between the rich and the poor, globalization hasn't solved that. So, so that is one of the limitations of globalization. More recently, globalization has been called into question because of the, the impact of COVID-19. It's made economies realize just how much they rely on other countries and other economies around the world, how much they need the supply chains, the raw materials. And because COVID has meant that borders have had to close, disruptions to supply chains, factories have had to close down, really on use of uh, labour markets because of illnesses. It means that that has interrupted every industry, every economy and almost every good around the world. So that has made some economies start to think whether they shouldn't rely too much on other countries. Maybe it's high risk if something like COVID and health pandemics are going to happen again. So that is a discussion that's taking place in some of the literature at the moment about globalisation. Uh, the anti-globalisation critique actually happened before the coronavirus uh, pandemic happened. So the election of Donald Trump uh, in the US and the Brexit votes in the UK has talked, has, has really highlighted this belief of anti-globalisation in the West. And I think this is something that's very difficult because in the West, 
we have benefited from globalization. So it's it's not fair for us to say globalization is bad because actually the West have benefited a lot from globalization. And it's time for other economies to, be, to, to benefit from that as well. But some, um, some politicians and some uh, economies do go back to favoring this protectionist state. We raise taxes, we raise the border um, to, to prevent that free trade, free movement of goods, free movement of people. Whereas actually the World Trade Organization will talk actually no, it is for the, the greater good, globalization helps all economies. There is always some negative impacts to it, but overall, the World Trade Organization will, will pr promote globalization um, very much so. Whereas the rise of the anti-globalization um, viewpoints in the West is signaling some different change that's happening there. Um, and that's that's one to watch. So that was just to highlight that, you know, there is a discussion that globalization isn't all good. But on, on the whole, the World Trade Organization support this. It's good for business. It can be good for individuals. It's good for growing um, the, the economies, especially of those developing nations, and therefore something that we should proceed to do. I'm just going to revisit the, the chat if there's anything um, to add there. I believe, thank you for translating as we go through. Um, and if you're happy to, we can then proceed on to the Kahoot quiz if you uh, want to give that a go. Mọi người ơi, bây giờ chúng ta sẽ chuẩn bị đến phần trò chơi Kahoot. Thì mọi người bây giờ chúng ta sẽ bấm vào mở điện thoại của mình lên và bấm cái phần là Kahoot.it nha. Rồi mình sẽ tìm kiếm Kahoot.it. Mọi người có ai chơi Kahoot này bao giờ chưa? Nào nào. Rồi. Ơi. Ok, rồi bây giờ em lấy điện, mọi người lấy điện thoại ra để mà mở vào cái phần trình dịp web và bấm là khuhut.it Rồi Ui, xin lỗi mọi người giết nhầm Rồi, khi mà mọi người bấm xong rồi thì mọi người sẽ thấy một cái màn hình hiện lên ghi là chữ là Game Pin Mọi người vô được hết chưa? Hi Miss Victoria, there is a game pin Yes, so I will stop yeah. sharing this screen now and then I will go to share Ok rồi mọi người ơi mình có thấy được cái dòng game pin là 3728153 Bây giờ ở trên điện thoại của mình mình sẽ nhập là 3728153 Sau đó nhấn enter 2728153 3728153 đó bạn rồi đúng rồi mọi người nhập tên của mình vô nha Để hỏi ai chiến thắng thì còn biết đường mà nhận quà nha rồi, ok, mọi người tham gia nha. Mọi người có thể dùng tên riêng của mình hoặc là dùng nickname, nhưng mà nhớ sao là có thể xác nhận được là ai nhận quà là được. Hai bạn chiến thắng ngày hôm nay mình sẽ được nhận voucher nha. Ok, mọi người ơi mình vô đi nào, vô đi nào. Rồi Nhung hướng dẫn lại mọi người nha. Mọi người vào mở trình duyệt web lên, nhập khuhut.it. Sau đó màn hình nó sẽ hiện lên là game pin thì mọi người nhập mã là 3728153. I think that we, they are going to join. Let's wait some more minutes. Oh, that's okay. I know sometimes it can be difficult to Depends if you've got a laptop on the phone or using a phone. We do know some students struggle to uh, to log on. Yes. Mọi người ơi, có bạn nào đang vô nhưng mà bị uh, lỗi hoặc là như thế nào hoặc là chưa tìm được cách vô thì cứ nói chị nha, bật mic lên nói chị hướng dẫn ngay lập tức nha. Okay, so we are going to start right now, Miss Victoria. I Thank think you that, very much. Yes. Yeah, it's not always easy to log on. For those who can't log on, I'll go through the quiz anyway, so you can sort of take part in, in your head. Um, but yeah, let, let's start the quiz. Thank you. Okay, so the first um, question, just last me a minute. Oh. Globalization is a process by which the world is becoming increasingly interconnected. Is that true or false? So I'll read that again. Globalization is the process by which the world is becoming increasingly interconnected. And you just click blue for true or red for false. Oh, 
Tôi chọn uh, truth hoặc là false nha mọi người Qua wow, mọi người chọn nhanh quá <cười> Uhm, để xem qua wow, mô mô me me không biết đọc oh, me me well done well done that's the, the quickest to answer correctly well done uhm. okay the second question which of the following factors has enabled globalization so which of the following factors has enabled globalization is it increased trade tariffs improved communications poor standards of living, protectionist foreign policies. Which of those four uh, has enabled globalization, allowed globalization to take place, to happen? Well done, okay, so. Oh, Mama Mimi, you, you've missed out. Well okay. done. Wow, that's really great. Rồi, bây giờ chúng ta đang uh, bạn Momo Meme đã rơi xuống hàng ba rồi. Có bạn này là đang lên đây. Rồi, now next questions please. Thank you. Question <cười> three, halfway through. What does globalization not involve? So which of those four aspects are not involved in globalization? The free movement of people, the free movement of goods, increased tax on <cười> imports, <cười> free movement of capital. Which does globalization not involve? So it's not part of globalization. Oh, 14, well done. It's changed again. Well done. Yay, this is my name. <laughs> oh, is it your <laughs> Well done. <laughs> Well done, well done. <laughs> okay, Đúng so rồi. we talked about TNC. What can you remember from the present? TNC is an acronym, so it's a, a shortened version for what? Trans Network Corporation, Trans Network Company, Transnational Corporation, or Transnational Collaboration. So this is from a specific slide. We talked about transnational oh. TNC. Oh. I nearly said it then as well. <laughs> it's changed again. The leaderboard is very uncertain Ngào today. Peng. Wow, Ngào yeah. Peng. Mm -hmm. Well done. Okay, penultimate question. A trade agreement between two countries is called what? So the example we talked about, um, well, actually it's UK, Vietnam, but there's EU, Vietnam. So a trade agreement between two countries or two nations is, is it unilateral, bilateral, multilateral, or a fair trade agreement? What is it between two countries? Oh. And who's done the scoreboard? Ah, second time, well done. Okay, last question is just true or false. There can be negative impacts of globalization. Blue to say it's true, red to say it's false. Um, okay, well, I'm 25, got that right, that's great. Okay, let's see who's got the top, the top score. Oh, so third, second, and first with a spotlight. Ah, okay, so 
We are going to have two students. One of them is Nhi 108 và bạn thứ hai là bạn Ngọc Hân. À, hai bạn này ngày mai là các bạn sẽ được nhận voucher uh, trị giá là 100.000 đồng cho mỗi bạn nha. Và mọi người ơi, nếu như mà lần này mà các bạn không thắng đi chăng nữa thì cũng đừng buồn nha. Ở các đợt sau, ở các lớp học sau thì tụi mình vẫn sẽ có những cái trò chơi như thế này nè. Có thể là mọi người chưa quen thôi. Ok, ở những lớp học sau tụi mình vẫn sẽ có trò chơi khô hút nè. Và vẫn sẽ có phần thưởng là máy tính bản. Nên là mọi người hãy nhớ là tham gia tích cực các hoạt động để không lần này thì lần khác mình sẽ trúng thưởng nha. Ok. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking part. Uh, that concludes the presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, just, oh, hang on, I need to um, stop sharing my screen. Um, there we go. So thank you very much for listening to my talk today. Thank you for getting involved. Uh, the chat box was fantastic. I've never had so much engagement um, from students that I've never met before. I'm really impressed with that. Thank you for your engagement. And then the quiz as well is a bit of fun at the end. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Great. Thank you so much, Victoria, for spending your time and uh, like having with us for these sessions. And we have so many wonderful information and that is really informative. Uh, furthermore, some of the students they asking whether they can have their powerpoints for this for your presentation. Yeah, of course, of course. I think I have sent that through already. Have you got a copy of these? So please feel free to share them on. Absolutely fine. Of course, yes. Okay. So, uh, hi, Lam. Is are you going to share more information about your uh, NCUKFY for their student before they are uh, going to? Uh, we are going to end it. it? Mm, not really, but uh, at least I would like to say thank again from Miss Victoria for your wonderful section today. And the rest information about NCUK FY, so I think uh, um, the student, you can look for it easily on the website of VN Talent or VN Talent fan page. And um, we also have another demo class for another section. So uh, everyone, you are welcome to join another demo class with us. And um, I think that's all. I and mean, thank you for your time today. Yay, cảm ơn mọi người rất nhiều. Cảm ơn mọi người đã dành thời gian để tham gia lớp học ngày hôm nay nha. Và rồi mọi người ơi, ở những lớp học sau thì mọi người đừng quên đăng ký để có thêm rất là nhiều thông tin hữu ích. Và um, hai bạn trúng thưởng ngày hôm nay là vui lòng inbox chị để mà có thể gửi cho chị địa chỉ uh, liên hệ cũng như là email để có chị chị có thể gửi quà cho các em. Và mọi người ơi nhớ tham gia cái phần thi để trúng máy tính bảng nha. Mình vẫn còn một phần quà rất lớn đó chính là máy tính bảng trị giá 3 triệu đồng. Uh, và bạn nào mà vẫn chưa hiểu rõ về thể loại để trò chơi nhận cái máy tính bảng thì có thể liên hệ chị để mà lấy lại cái phần thông tin đó. Ok, Miss Ella, is there any other information that you are going to, that you want to say? No, you talk a lot, so I have nothing to say. <cười> ok, that's right. <cười> ok, bye. Thank you so much, Miss Victoria. Thank you. Enjoy your afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.